a science fiction short film titled Kessler Syndrome and it's a, a, a film about an astronaut Captain Jack Harrison who is on a mission in outer space to try to get across a very dense and dangerous debris field and he's trying to reach a planet that uh, lies on the other side. Okay. The very beginning of the film, the very what made me want to make this particular movie was because in my mind it was the simplest movie that I could make. Um, it's cause, so as well as, you know, I've, I've wanted to be a filmmaker since I was a kid, so I've been trying to get into it, finally get into it, um, but I've also been acting as well, and so, I, I, so this film was going to try to be many things. It was going to be um, more demo footage for my agent, it was going to be my first film to get it out there, so I was like, okay, what's the simplest thing I could think of? And I was like, oh, okay, one guy, you know, a camera on one guy for most of the movie. I'm like, awesome. That's like, a, it's like a cockpit, so it's like, what is that, a chair, right? And, and, I'm, and I'm, I'm gonna fly the ship, and I'm like, and then I didn't really think about everything that happens outside of the ship. In my mind, I was like, okay, well, miniature model, and then what space? It's like black with white stars. Perfect, that's gonna be easy. So the inspiration for the movie was kind of simplicity. Um, I was so wrong. Like, what I've realized now is, um, so the, the interior parts of the ship, I was correct. I mean, that was still one guy in a ship, but for the exterior shots, you know, you can't, you can't just go shoot space, right? Um, so, next film, I'm gonna set it on Earth. It's gonna be in the real world. Um, but in terms of the actual specifics of this movie, uh, I, I wanted it to be like good science fiction, so I, I actually contacted um, the astrophysics department at York University, and I actually sat down with some people, faculty guys there, because um, I, I, I had my idea for the plot, and I'm not gonna, yeah, I don't want to spoil it, but the, the, I knew it was the stuff that would happen throughout the course of the film, but what I wanted were sort of the specific things that, that happen. I wanted those to be kind of based in reality in terms of what can actually happen, I don't know, in, the, in, the, in actual, I don't know, physics, but according to science. So that's why even with the title Kessler Syndrome, um, that was, that's an actual thing by, I guess it was a scientist named Kessler, who, who theorized this idea if there's eventually on, around planet Earth, you know that we have space junk in the atmosphere, if there eventually you have too much of it, because the space junk kind of flies around and crashes into each other, which makes more space junk and that crashes into more, he theorized that eventually if there was so much debris in space, that it would make our ability to travel through space or leave planet Earth impossible. So that was, that was something that, that I learned from those guys, these two really cool astrophysicists at, at York University in Toronto. So, so that's where, it, uh, that's where it kind of the science part came from. So that was, that was all me. Um, it was, uh, so, so like I said, from the beginning, I was like, yeah, what am I gonna do? I don't know, miniature model and, and black background, right? But what I realized, so the miniature model part, like I actually do enjoy painting miniature models. Like I've been doing that since I was a kid, just like at a hobby, it's like painting soldiers and stuff. It's the nerdiest thing I do, but it's still, I really enjoy it. Um, but that actually helped with the spaceship. So when it came time to actually, when I was thinking about the movie, that's probably why in my mind it was going to be simple because I'm like, oh, you know, I can make a miniature. And I was pretty happy with it. I made it out of, um, uh, you know, those white, wet wipes you can buy for like, I don't know, you, you buy them at like Costco or something. Anyway, they come in like a tube, a plastic tube. Two of those became the rockets and then I kind of built it. Out. So I built this miniature model. Um, and then all these special effects were all green screen, so I, I had to film the ship in front of green screen and then, um, you know, remove the green screen and then add space. And then all the debris, each piece I had to film, like, uh, like some of it was crumpled, crumpled up bits of foil, some of it was crumpled up pieces of all sorts of things. And so what I basically did was filmed it um, rotating slowly, all of it, and then I had to animate each, or not animate, just and then place it in each shot and, and make it spin around. So. Somebody else asked me if they, they thought it was computer animation, but no, there's no, no computer animation in the movie. Um, I, I, I'd never even, even thought about it because I don't know anything about computer animation. So in my mind, it was going to be really expensive, so I didn't even walk down the, down, down the road. Uh, it was interesting. I mean, it was a learning curve. Like my, my initial, 
when I first started shooting it, I, my, I thought the easiest way would be I got like a dolly, and so I had the camera, the ship stationary, and I would move the camera slowly by, and that would create the illusion of movement. But I found it didn't work. Either It was either the limitation of the dolly that I had, but I found a lot of that footage was unusable, so ultimately I found making it move digitally was, anyway, it was a lot of trial and error, but yeah, all miniature models. So that's good. I mean, space is very, I guess it's very trendy right now, I think. I think maybe because of, I mean, the, the, especially in the media, we're talking so much about Mars, and they found water on Mars a little while ago, so I think it's on people's minds. And, and then also, I, I think also maybe when, you know, there's a lot of turmoil going on in the news and stuff, I think that also gets people thinking about maybe the world is going to end and we have to leave, so maybe there's that as well. But it's, it's yeah, that's probably why. I mean, it was on my mind. I mean, I'm very interested in it, so... Basically, uh, the thing I know for sure is my next film, I will not both be directing it and be in it. Um, I, I knew I would have a lot on my plate, you know, achieving the special effects and painting the sets and everything. I was prepared for that. Um, what, I, what I realized when we got to the first day of filming, you know, literally the day, up until like 2 or 3 a.m. the night before, I was finishing up sets, you know, building things, finishing up the space base, anything we were getting ready. And then it wasn't until like the morning of when we're kind of setting up lights, and then it occurs to me, I have to do acting today. Like I actually have to, not only, not only do I have to make sure that the cameras are right and that the lighting is right. And the thing about this film is, that I, everybody who was involved were, were my, they're all friends and family, right? So nobody's, nobody's professional in terms of any equipment or anything. So any shot that I'm not in, I'm behind the camera filming it. And then any shot that I'm in, um, it's one of my friends who's operating it, which they're awesome and they did a great job, but they, they're not professionals, right? So there, there, was, there was, not only do I have to make sure that I'm giving a performance, but I also am always glancing at the monitors and being like, oh, can you tilt up a little bit? Oh, okay, adjust this. Like sometimes I'm physically reaching over to the lens and focusing it, you know? So it was, um, if I'm gonna do a film again where I'm in it and, and directing, I, I just gotta get a really, really good camera operator professional to take care of that, just, just to take that off my plate. Um, but yeah, it was a lot. Basically, put it in perspective, I, I imagine that the film would be finished in three or four months, and it was done in like a, a, a year and like four months. So I was off by like a year. So I, I knew I was in trouble. There was one day I was editing. Like at this point, we'd already finished all the, all the like shooting parts. Now I'm just editing. And there was one day where... So I started editing, there's one shot, you know, in the movie where like the ship just kind of, it, it goes like this and it dodges a piece of debris and then it goes like this and dodges, so it's just whoosh, like this. That shot's like six seconds, that was eight hours. It didn't even feel like eight hours, like I just started, you know, you're working on it kind of sometimes frame by frame, you're moving stuff around. And then suddenly, you, you know, you'll sit up and you'll stretch your back and you'll look and it's been like five hours are just gone. And, th and that was six seconds of footage. I knew I was in trouble when that happened. I'm like, this is a short film, but if I'm going to spend eight hours on six seconds, it's, it's going to take a long time. Uh. There were lots of, in fact, the most enjoyable shot that we did, it was almost a scene that almost um, wasn't in the movie. It was, it was, a, it was a shot that I, I thought about having, but in, in the, when we first shot, I thought, oh, it's not that important, we just won't have it. But it's a split-second shot where, um, I won't reveal the spoiler, but I'm covered in slime, if you've seen the movie. You see for a split second, I'm covered in slime. And for that shot, um, I, need, I, I needed to find slime, so I used... I ultimately settled on a, di a hand soap, and it was like, because it, it, the slime I wanted was like, you know in Ghostbusters 2, have you seen Ghostbusters 2, you know the pink slime that's in that, that's what I wanted, I wanted the kind of like, like, it's kind of gross, kind of looks like it's alive, pink slime, so what I found was a grapefruit hand soap, and it's also scented, grapefruit scented hand soap, right? And it, because the reason I went with that, because I was thinking about different things, but it was so cheap. It was like a, a jug this big was like three ninety nine. I'm like, budget? Yeah, that'll work. So we go to shoot, and I like take off my clothes. I'm just in my underwear, and then it's, and it's all my friends and like my family. They're like, okay, dump it. So they dump it on me, and it's one. I was like, I knew it was going to be gross, but I didn't anticipate how cold it was going to be. <laughs> so the stuff hits me, and I was like, ah. So that was a fun day of shooting, and then. It got all, it's, it's all over my face. They had to douse my entire body. And I have this thing in my mouth, so it's supposed to be my breathing tube, which was actually a snorkel. But, and I thought that would keep it out, but it didn't. It seeped past. So we shot for, I don't know how long we shot, but I'm like, it was so cold and so uncomfortable. And then afterwards, I, so as soon as we finished shooting, I run into the shower and I'm like rinsing myself off. 
and I'm rinsing my mouth so in the shower I'm like I like spitting and for like 20 minutes suds just kept coming out of my mouth and e so even after like so I had the shower I'm like it just there's the suds just keep coming so I'm like all right it's not gonna end so I just got out of the shower and then even then I just go into the sink half hour after that I'm just spitting suds and it's funny because I, I thought to myself after I'm like it's a good thing that I'm the one in this movie because like uh, how would I have felt if I made an actor do this or if I put them through like there I don't know if there there must be some negative health of, of ingesting soap and like d putting it that much all over you and I'm, I'm, in my head I'm like this yeah it's good that I did this to myself because you know I mean I'm not gonna sue myself or anything but but yeah it was uh that that was probably the most it was really disgusting but looking back I'm like that was the pretty funny it's like we got the shot we wanted it worked out I, I, worked I out. would never Grapefruit soap. It smelled, the smell was so strong too. Like it tastes, because well, obviously grapefruit scented soap doesn't taste like grapefruit, right? Soap, it tastes like soap. So you, you're, you're tasting this horrible taste and you're smelling constant grapefruit because it's in your nose. It was awful. It was awful. <laughs> Thank you.